this is an unusual and I believe unprecedented session to have one of the top product people and the top ad person together to talk about where Facebook's heading. You are now emphasizing that there is a revenue aspect to the product process. We think about these things not just, you know, we think about it, the user experience and the monetization opportunities as uh, either side of the same coin in the sense that, um, you know, we really think that in uh, the world that we're moving into and as Facebook with so much time and attention that we get that we have opportunities to really bring out new forms of marketing uh, that are really effective. We're seeing great results to that. You pick up a newspaper in the morning, you know, what if it was perfectly customized just for you and what, what would you see? Uh, and the answer is the content coming from your friends, the people you've kind of asserted are important in your life is a huge percentage of it. But it's not the whole story. I mean, there are plenty of brands and companies that I want to interact with that are a part of who I want to hear from and, and the conversations I want to be having. And so, you know, when I, I look at where we are and where we're going and we see these opportunities, a lot of it's about saying, how do we take that whole piece of the equation of what it means to have the ideal newspaper, these great experiences about experiencing the world, and then introduce the kind of the economic component of it to help optimize that? Do you think that what you just said is another way of saying that over time, the Facebook newsfeed and the results you would get from a search engine might in some sense converge? I think a lot has to do with where you start from and kind of the perspective you bring into these types of problems and these problem sets. You know, I think that when you think about it, the fundamental piece of Facebook, the place we start from, is that it's all about people. It's all about connecting, expressing things to people, understanding things through people, and using your networks, the people you trust, the connections you've made to help filter information to help you live a better life, to experience the world in the best possible way. David, as the guy who's got to figure out where the money comes from, where is it going to be coming from in two, five, ten years, and how much is there going to be? Well, look, it's no secret that mobile is the critical growth area. Um, and you know, we've certainly invested in a heavy way <clears throat> this year in mobile. And, and one of the, the key things that I think we started with as a belief and that you know, it hasn't taken very long to, to come to pass is that mobile is a great thing for our users, for our advertisers, and for Facebook. You know, if you just look at the engagement rates of people, and you know, that's the number one metric from our standpoint is you know, certainly the number of people. And passing a billion is a great milestone. We got, there's a lot more people to get to. But the, the notion of then are those people engaged? And what we're seeing is that um, you know, people on their mobile devices are more engaged. There are people in the world looking at their news feeds, taking out their newspapers, who want to know what are the most important and exciting things for them to know. For millions of people, or a certain number of people, like, actually knowing that there's a great new product for them to buy is a huge deal. Yeah. Like, that's like, that actually is really fundamentally important. Given that almost everything that you're selling depends on the performance of the news feed in some fashion, especially on mobile, isn't it going to be necessary over time to introduce more transparency into the functionality? I mean. Or, or, or do you consider yourselves to be already doing that? I think, look, I, I think actually you've put your finger on a really important uh, ch challenge for us, which is making sure that people understand the value they're deriving. And I would argue right. that it's an equal analogy as if you had bought an ad in a newspaper or magazine um, to promote to economy that you wouldn't. Well, that's why people don't do that very okay. much anymore. But, right. but, but I don't think there, there's lots of things that people buy that they don't necessarily question that. Now, our belief is you should have all of that information available to you. What does it mean that everyone can speak to everyone else instantly on Earth for free, right? Um, it means that if you actually, if we had that superpower built into our brains right now in our ears, you couldn't hear anything, right? Because you'd just be bombarded with 7 billion people speaking to you all at once, right? So I think the future requires filtering someone to help you effectively navigate all the information at your disposal to say, look, I really, I have five minutes, I have three, 30 seconds, what do I need to know right now? Like, what's the best information for me? We certainly want to give people a sense of who they're speaking to, audience, both from this perspective, but also from a privacy perspective. Understanding who you're speaking to informs how you speak. Mm -hmm.